I marry a wife, I'll marry a landlord's daughter. For then I may sit at the bar and drink cold brandy and water. Wild ducks would never feed with curlews. Never. Of course they would. The curlews act as sentinels. Whilst the wild duck is eating, the curlews stand guard. They go way out of that. I suppose when the curlew are feeding, the wild duck looks after them. If they're that close, I'm surprised they haven't evolved into one another and become a duck. Come on, then, Kenan. <laughs> You're going to have to adjudicate on this one. It makes a change from you and your encyclopedia, anyway. <laughs> Same again, Tim. And a Scotch. I wonder how many centuries it took you to evolve your pronunciation of Scotch. Precisely as many as it took you to evolve yours. The village intellectuals have met their match. The village idiot. One thing I've often wondered about. The badger. A nocturnal creature. How's your daughter getting on in London, Tim? Fine, thanks, Kenneth. Fine. But you still go out on a break. It'll be a change for her, you know, before she goes off to university. That's the main thing. Right. Could sheep be trained to eat it? What? The badger? Those. Get rid of the worms at once. It'll probably get rid of the sheep as well. <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? Oh. Not tonight, sir. In six months' time, maybe. When you know my badger. <laughs> Farmers happy. Aye, and the fishermen. And the tourists. Yeah, it's about time I became a tourist myself. I was thinking of taking a week off. Yeah, don't bother. Thinking of visiting your family? No, nah, I was thinking of going to London for a few days. I'll get a crate of larder. Oh, 
I've just been with an old farmer, warning him he must cut the ragwort growing in his fields. Didn't take a bit of notice of me. It's illegal, you know, ragwort. So you tell me. Well, toxic is the word. It's toxic properties could be harnessed to commit murder, you know. Yet no one around here has ever tried it. Mind you, its toxic properties could easily be traced in the alimentary canal of the deceased. I've been at a good autopsy for years and years. Are you prospecting for gold? I heard you were. No, barites. Not as good as gold, I'm afraid. I see. I own this stretch of rock. I've got a good claim to it in law. Ah, I hope you don't mind. Hasn't head office cleared it with you? Oh, walk away, walk away. But I'll mind if you find gold. Foxglove, of course, is toxic. You can make digitalis out of foxglove. Provided, of course, you gather them at the right time of the year. Smells good. Starving. Be ready in a minute. Is this on the house? It is. Whenever you put up a drink on the house, I know there's mischief on your right. Ah. And how much are you offering me today? Same as before. Four thousand. If I sell, it'll be to a farmer. Like my father before me was. What would the likes of you be doing with it? Huh? You'd just buy to sell when it suited you. Not at all. I don't intend to stay in this bar game all my life. I intend to farm it. Eventually. And of course, it'll be something to leave to Cecily. <laughs> I'm thinking it'll fetch a bit more than 4,000 if the Englishman finds gold. <laughs> or digs up something else, eh? Eh? <laughs> fool's gold is the only gold in your land, Krubrook. Well, it's a poor fool you'll die. Unless you sell. <laughs> Grand tea, Tim. Powerful. Thanks. Good. I aim to please. I think I'll go down the road and make a phone call. I'll be back in a while. Make it from here, can't you? Nah. It's personal. Long distance. I'll be alone with you. Good evening. And a nice card from Cecil. She's having the time of her life. I just popped up to see is everything okay. Couldn't be better. We haven't agreed a rent yet, mind. Oh, no, we will, we will. When I get around to it. I'm so busy these days, I haven't got time to think.
I own some of the land, you see. An old crew box bit of ground. Well, you never know. He might sell it. Don't uh, worry about the rent until... You know what I mean. It's like horse racing, I suppose. Inside information is the thing. I left it them only an hour ago. day. I often think of the evening under the minister's bridge and the strange things you did to me. A hundred kisses and one last one from your loving Cecily. Send for our new heart-shaped pillow today. Place it under your partner's bottom and feel the difference. Choice of foam rubber or hot water filled ergonomically designed. Order before September the 3rd and receive free lust finger by return of post. of home, Sir Gorter. You're going back down to County Kerry tonight, Emma. You should never have employed a Kerry man up here in Donegal. Oh, no, lad. Sergeant will be in in a minute. I'll ask a question now before we go. Now, listen to this word. That's a question of my own. Potter, you're the scientist. What does ergonomically mean? Ergonomically? Designed for efficiency to minimize human effort. Correct. Top marks. You're not installing a newfangled stout dispenser, are you? How does the snipe beat his tattoo in the spring? Tattoo? How does he drum? Oh, Tim will know that. And him the second best Come on, now, lads. shot in the country. Drink up. He beats his tattoo with his outer tail feathers. He holds them out stiffly at right angles when he swoops. Get away out of that, you old bluffer. I know the answer. Enlighten us, then. With his syrinx, of course. Fair play to you, Evan. With his syringe. His syrinx. That's how most birds make sounds. Not the snipe. The snipe's drumming is a different kettle of fish. Whilst you're mixing your metaphors, Tim, stick some amber elixir in that, would you? Tim, Tim, Tim! Bit of double whiskey, I'm right. I bet a bottle you're not. I look it up after closing. No more. What is the exception that proves the rule? Home the lot is. Life. Enough to satisfy my curiosity. 
Hosen. Hosen, you want to have an affair here with someone? What kind would you like? Something light-hearted to engage the mind more than the heart. You mean you want conversation as well as copulation? In a nutshell, I'll fix you up with Maggie Hessian. She's the local nurse. And a snappy conversationalist. Finish your drink. We'll call her up before bedtime. No, no, no. It's too late, surely. I don't go to bed round here till all hours. Come on. Time, please, ladies and gentlemen. Well, have you found it? Am I right or am I right, huh? Jesus, boy, you're full of it. Let's go back, knock up Rorty, and have an all-night session. No, we'll go to Maggie Hessian and that's that. Landlord in a thousand is Rorty. In a sense, he's wasted here. You know, he's a spoiled priest, Rorty. He trained to be a priest one time. That's her light. I've had second thoughts. I tell you've sprained your ankle. And you've come to have a burn. She'll know, for heaven's sake, she's a nurse, isn't she? You're thinking like a clapped-out bachelor. What you need is another scotch. I do not need another scotch. Quite frankly, I feel as if I've had a skinful. A word of advice, then. Surrender to the genius of the country. Gone home, I see. Ah, yes. All gone. There must be a good late night movie on the television. Aye. Very quiet. Very quiet. Thank God. Eh, nothing stirring at all. Good night.
Sergeant McGinn could see us now. He'd have us up on a buggery charge. <laughs> we could plead it was all in the service of heterosexuality. <laughs> I thought. I'm sorry. What's wrong? Nothing, Nora. He. Hurt his ankle. <laughs> Kenneth Potter? Nora Hessian. Ouch! Oh! Oh! You better come in. Oh, no, no, we'll be going. He's all right now. Aren't you, Kenneth? Ouch! Stumbled coming up Gareth's Bray. I saw the Nora coming in like this. And um, why, if you're Maggie, are you called Nora? I'm Maggie's sister. She's delivering a baby tonight. Uh -huh. Well, take off your shoe and sock and I'll bathe it for you. Oh, no, no, I'll take him home. It'll be all right. Don't be nonsensical, Gimp. I'll get hot water. You're the first girl I've seen here wearing sandals. It's my day off. I don't wear them usually. Canon Loftus doesn't approve. What's it got to do with him? I'm his housekeeper. Have you sold your soul to him? He's only the parish priest. He's not the devil. I don't think it's sprained. Feels much better already. <clears throat> we'll be away now. It's very late. Hold your horses, Gimp. I'll make some tea. Splendid.
When God created Adam, he then created Eve to love and serve him. Woman came second. She is the weaker sex, and therefore falls easier than man. And when a woman falls, the family topples after her. The serpent in the garden seduced Eve. He told her what she wanted to hear. If Adam had said, here, have a bite of apple, she would have laughed at him. It wasn't the apple that seduced Eve. It was the sound of the word on the serpent's tongue. Apple. Apple. Now, at all wooden altar, my dearly beloved brethren, I think you'll agree that like most of us, it's past its best. It must be replaced. And what I have in mind is cut limestone in the modern manner, polished and shining, glowing in the dark. Ireland is full of wonders. I just found Cor Muggle with one eye to the exhaust pipe of my car. Cor Muggle looks up the exhaust pipes of cars as a journalist might look up a dictionary. Or a woman's skirt. A sexual fixation, would you say? Undoubtedly. Any word from Eels at all? Not a word. He's gone and no mistake. And the bugger owes me a fiver. <clears throat> well, he's left me hamstrung anyway. If you hear of anyone looking for a job as a barman, let me know. Why not a bar me? My sentiments precisely. Well, I hear you're doing all right in that line, Potter. You and Nora Hessian. I neither confirm nor deny common gossip. And I write, Gimp. Hey? Yes. That's all right, Kelv. I hope the canon didn't see me. He might be envious. He doesn't fancy you too, does he? No, but your car is bigger than his. He has a worldly streak in him. Why should you wish to spare him envy? It's one of the seven deadly sins. I'm paid to be his housekeeper, not to lead him into any kind of temptation. You can lead me into temptation, if you like. It's the other way around, isn't it? I've only asked you to come to the pictures. Lovely. It's like the Pacific Zone. Oh, no. What's the matter? South Pacific. I've been dragged to see it four times already. Let's go to a nice hotel bar, and I'll sing you I'm only a cockeyed optimist. No, thank you. And we can have fish and chips on the way home. No, we'll have supper somewhere nice. I'll be back too late. I'd wake the cannon up on the creaky stairs. I don't see why we should allow the cannon to spoil our evening. He won't spoil our evening. Fish and chips will be lovely. Fresh off the boats, still tasting of the sea. You have sad eyes, Nora. So have you. We have something in common, then. Perhaps. Let's not talk about the past. I love the country, but not the villages. An English village embodies, for most Englishmen, an ideal of life. 
Can you imagine anyone driving for miles on a Sunday to have tea in an Irish village? It's my fate to be taken to the pictures by men with a taste for sophistry. So our evening's been a replica of all the evenings you've been out with Canon Loftus? Not exactly. Tonight the talk is different. The feeling that time is passing is more pronounced. Does he buy you fish and chips? Always. What does he talk about? He's like you. Ask me questions all the time. Time. It was years ago. Don't worry, Nora. I'll make you flower. From now on, you'll feel only the heat of the sun. doesn't tempt me. It's not the money, it's what happens to my land after I'm gone. What difference does it make? You can't take it with you. Oh, well, would if I could. Eh? Looks like more weather, lads. Eh? Well. Hey, it's an ill wind. There, I agree with you. Eels's mother rang up. Wherever he's got to, it's not home anyway. That book could be anywhere. I'd like to get away myself. I wish I was in Scotland Yard, solving rape and murder cases by the dozen. If only there was a Moriarty around these parts. I've got the nose, you see, for crime. But what's the good of a nose if there's no one to leave a... Spoor. Imagination's what a policeman needs, not logic. Well, you should be all right there, so. Oh, thank you. More bills, I see. Aye, something I've been noticing recently. An increase in official mail. It's right, you know. The telephone has murdered the art of letter writing. Dear Rorty, Eels is transplanted, but not his magazine, which I'm still enjoying. If you want to keep his whereabouts secret, pay £60 a week into account number 319219, the Bank of Ireland, Walmer Square, Dublin. Yours sincerely, but seriously, Monk Mailer.
You're going out with Nora Essien, I believe. You know she's my maid. I have no objection to maids. You intend marrying the girl? How should I know? I've only just met her. She's a sensitive girl and I won't have her hurt. Are you a Catholic? You know I attend your church, so why do you ask? Are you married? What is this? The Inquisition? Oh, you know, most Englishmen are married by 25, and you'll never again see 40. I must be satisfied for the girl's sake that you're bona fide. Your question is an unpardonable impertinence. A typical English stance. <laughs> no Irish Catholic would dare speak like that to his parish priest. In England, there would be no need. English rectors mind their own business, which, if they're good rectors, is God's. Don't try and teach me my business. As an English Catholic, you're in no position to. You belong to a rump, less than a minority. A sect with neither temporal nor spiritual power, remote from the ideals that gave life to the English nation. Yet you come over here and tell me how to behave in my own parish. I call it cheek, damn cheek. What are you trying to say? <clears throat> the English genius is a Protestant genius. And therefore, the only proper Englishman is a Protestant, just as the only proper Irishman is a Catholic. A word of fatherly advice in your eye. Go back to England and take up Protestantism. You're holding up the traffic, Padre. Don't call me Padre. I don't like it. There are three vehicles behind you waiting for you to move, and not one of the drivers has the courage to ask you to move. Faith overcomes even courage. Hmm. How typical of Irish Catholicism. Let's keep them waiting another minute to test their faith. Have you, <coughs> have you ever considered what might have happened to English Catholicism if you'd had a Cambridge rather than an Oxford movement? Well, as a Cambridge man myself, I obviously have. It's a measure of the aridity of English Catholicism that such a question can be taken seriously. Open the bag and look inside. How should I recognize a foot? It's the foot of a friend. Your one time barman, Eels. How do you know that? There was a luggage label tied around the ankle. It said Eamon Eels, passenger to Hades via Sligo. here would call hell Hades. Now, I want you to think carefully. Anything distinctive about Eel's feet? They stink. Like Gorgonzola. Please smell the foot for me. There's a limit to a citizen duty in helping the police. I draw the line at smelling dead men's feet. I smelled it. There was no smell. It was, I suspect, kept in a freezer. And not many around here have freezers. 
That should limit your list of suspects for a start. <coughs> the man or woman must live on their own. You could hardly store a foot in the house living with someone else now, could you? What if the wife found it when she went to get out the Sunday joint? Moriarty, who thinks he can fool me with a sly gold dead herring. He's two men in one. Civilised. Brutal. Just what I was thinking. This could be the making of me, Rorty. I've got the nose and at last I've got the spur. I can smell the murderer in the air. How did you come by the foot? I wondered when you were going to ask me that. It was left hanging on my door knocker. If you'd killed a man round here, where would you bury the body? I've no idea. Think. The success of this murder hunt may well depend upon your answer. Murderers on the whole are not very intelligent. In murder, they show their failure to solve their personal problems rationally. For that reason, I'd say that whoever did it would go no further than his back garden. We'll start with your back garden. Thank you very much. No, no offense. Every garden in the place will be dug up. Feel free to start at mine then. Dear Rorty, the trotter is just an antipasto. Pay £90 a week into account number 319219 by September the 1st, otherwise I will arrange for McGing to find a severed head in your garden. You're far from <coughs> sleeping partner in devilry. Bog mailer. Anything. If they do, I hope it's varieties. 